Now, the reason I make this video series is not necessarily to force morals on other people. I leave them to make the choice. I make this video series because I want people to think. Just coming out of the wonderful cathedral service here today. And yes, people are going back to the churches. They've been doing that for the past few weeks. I'm here at the Inverness Cathedral. And today they mentioned that this particular day was the anti-slavery day. Slavery. Quite a striking word, isn't it? Many corrupt rulers and leaders falling under delusions of prejudice began to enslave other people by force. Rather than treating them as the fair, hard-earned workers that they were, the slaves were oppressed and were given no due credit for the hard labor they've had to go through. We see this kind of corrupt slavery everywhere throughout history. This corrupt slavery would always be associated with someone trying to attain power through oppression and pride. We particularly notice slavery in supposedly great empires. We learned this kind of slavery from the days of ancient Rome and how many slaves tried to rebel against their Roman oppressors. We've learned of this form of slavery from ancient Egypt and the Exodus scriptures from the Pharaoh who came after the Pharaoh who met Joseph. And also throughout history, we've seen a particularly unfair treatment towards Africa. It's interesting to note that in the days of the Old Testament, the word slavery used to be positively associated with the work of a servant. Many people had to take on the role of a servant to make up for their poor upbringing back in the day. Servanthood was a great way to live by. And even to this day, servanthood is how we serve and help each other for the greater good. Yet somewhere along the lines of history, something went wrong, as many things do. You see, good kingdoms have good fruits to bear. But bad empires are always going to build their kingdoms through oppression and pride. But of course, there were many people who opposed this oppressive kind of slavery. At the cathedral today, there was a mention of a hero by the name of William Wilberforce and his son Samuel. If any of you had a fantastic history class at school, you'll know William Wilberforce as one of the leading abolitionists who ended the slave trade, and it was his faith that motivated him. Let me ask you a question. On what moral standard do we use to judge slavery? You see, the Atlantic slave trade was focusing on suppressing the free will of Africans. Africans back at that time were seen as no better than animals. In fact, Africans were seen as animals. Africans were seen as lesser apes. They were seen as cattle to be used for their own gain. You see, back in the day when the Atlantic slave trade was a thing, that was more or less the same mindset that many rich people in Britain had at the time. Why is the type of slavery that involves the oppression of others wrong? Hmm? Wouldn't that make empires grow faster? If life is all about survival of the fittest, then why not use oppression to make an empire thrive? Why not dominate others and make your current lives easier? Because if there is no moral authority to appeal to, why should we strive for goodness? Why should we see others as equal? And people literally bought, owned, and traded Africans. And they kept abusing them because they treated them like property, not actual people with souls or worth. That's only a small taste of the abuse that the Africans had to go through. They had to come to a stop. It was the men of faith, like William Wilberforce, Thomas Clarkson, Granville Sharp, and former slave Olada Equiano, and John Newton, a former slave captain turned priest, using the authority of God himself, told everyone that in God's eyes, everyone is equal. We and the Africans are people, 
I'm not making any of this up, by the way. This is a real historical fact. Tremendous efforts were made. Papers were written. People resisted the resources that were brought from the Atlantic slave trade, like the sugars, tobacco and molasses, all for the well-being of the Africans. Olanda Aquiano, the former slave, wrote a book about his experiences. John Newton, the former slave captain seeking repentance, wrote the hymn Amazing Grace. He was once blind. Blind to the well-being of the Africans, but now he saw the truth. There's a bittersweet irony that John Newton later became literally blind. Yet, despite his physical blindness, he could see better than he ever did. And as for William Wilberforce, he spoke in Parliament all the way to the very ends of his life. It wasn't until his last years that he managed to see the slave trade come to an end in Britain. Now, of course, slavery would take time to be abolished in other parts of the world, but the abolition of the Atlantic slave trade was that major first step. Like the man's first step on the moon, this was man's first step towards equality and freedom in modern times. And because these heroes used their faith to put an end to slavery, we have seen many heroes who did the same thing ever since namely Martin Luther King Jr. Now, of course, the issue of slavery is a prejudice issue. And I reckon if we as human beings are ever going to stop slavery once and for all, as in the type of slavery that oppresses people, don't you think we should get to the root of the issue? People's depraved nature to try to be dominant? And think about it. The heroes of faith found a solution because the word of God says everyone is equal. If you're going to oppose me on this, let me ask you again. By what standard should we be equal? Makes you think, doesn't it? And I want to end this video off with something. Next time you approach someone of a different skin color, are you going to judge them by the cliches of their culture? Or are you going to judge them by the quality of their character? We all know that even the swans tend to bite. And slavery is a terrible issue. But if we get to people to think about the issue, perhaps we'll be one step closer to ending oppressive slavery once and for all. Not bad, eh?